okay welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new video this time it's a little bit different because this is the um beef eater challenge for this month <clears throat> it's a new thing that's going on the beef eater challenge for this month is a land rover so i've chose the corgi land rover 109 long wheelbase So this is what we're going to be doing for the challenge. Okay, we're off the stand. Let's have a look at it closer. Look, uh, here we go. Corgi's 109 inch, or oh, just what it says on there, uh, wheelbase. This is your bog standard Land Rover. It ain't too fussy. It's fairly good condition. Little scratch on the side there, in the window. It's got all its tyres. The correct size. One on a bonnet. I think this is. I think the bumper's okay on this one. Straight bumper. I think this is a Mark II Series Two Land Rover. So suspension. So we're going to rip into this. And uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do with this. I haven't got a plan. As such, well, I've got a couple of, tell a lie, I've got a couple of plans, a couple of ideas, but I'm not sure what to do. So the first thing we do, we get it stripped down, get it get it uh, caustic soded, and then uh, I'll decide. Okay, so let's get it stripped down. Okay, okay then, let's have a look what we got. Standard suspension, Gorgi. Oh, I better get them axles straight out of there. Yeah. Uh, interior. It's your vac form interior. And then your glass. There's no rivets holding this, as far as I can see. So it should come out. It should come out. Oh, what it might be, what's that? Oh. Here it comes. One glass unit. The only damage I can see is just there. But we'll try and get that as good as we can. Basic steering wheel. Got the spare wheel tag, I think we can squeeze them together. Get that off, I think. Get the right tools for the job. Get the right tools for the job. Get that off there now. There you go. That's a spare wheel off. On there. There it is. Just a pin. Like that. Split pin. I'll just open it a bit like that. That's your pin, that's your wheel. That's your body. Job done. It's got drilly holes. Clean it out. Get the tires off. One, two, three, four. They're in good condition. Plus the spare. We'll have that off. There's your spare. Now I should be able to just pop these out the front there. That's one. That's two. There you go. That's it. Stripped. So we'll get these in the stripper. 
get them washed. I'm not going to put these in the caustic soda. I'll just clean them up. Those those bits and wash the tyres. Don't go down to the sink. That's it. Job done. So let's get caustic soda in. Okay, this is the Land Rover. All cleaned up and polished. Tell you what, there's some nice details on this. It's a shame to cover up the paint. Look at that. Look at the details on the back of that. It's really nice. Really nice, fine details. Very nice. Yeah, I like this. Right, so that's all cleaned up. So the next stage is now I've got to decide what I'm going to do with it. I'll clean the windscreen up. That's all cleaned up. So now, decision time. I shan't tell you yet because I haven't made my mind up. I've got to check my paint stocks and see what I've got. So stay tuned and you will see what happens next. Right, progress on the old Land Rover. I've decided, excuse me, I've decided which one I'm going to go with this. <laughs> oh dear, excuse me, I've got the burps. Um... I painted this white, and if you can see, I've gone over it with some rough sandpaper, exposed some of the metal there, and made the rest dirty. I used a dirty old thing, so it transposed some of the dirt on it. Yeah, you see all that? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint it with this Tamiya. The medium blue and the roof in this grey colour. But before I do that, I'm going to use hairspray. I've used this method before on plastic scale models, so I don't know what it's going to be like on this. So the trick is, most of these are aluminium parts on here, so I can't go rusty rusty like you would do in a normal metal parts. So what I've done here, I used the white is the idea is supposed to be oxidised aluminium and where it's gone through to the bare metal. So I'm going to spray this with hairspray. Then I'll paint it with this. And then I should use, use a brush, stiff brush, and some water. And hopefully it will dilute the blue and expose the white and the silver underneath. That's, that's the idea. So we'll wait and see. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> right, here we go. Now, I put the air spray on. I painted the, the uh, grey blue. As you can see, you get a little toothbrush or something similar, a stiff brush, and then you can uh, work it. I've done the roof. It's supposed to be like a grey. It's, it's, I've done this, and whilst it was still wet, uh, I worked it through the blue onto the white to make it look really mucky. It's supposed to be like a light grey, like a whitey cream top, and it's I made it look mucky. And uh, I'm now just working the way through to get like a rough aluminium surface, yeah, where all the paint's faded off. Trick is not to go too mad with it, because it'll look daft. Where the paint's coming off, you see? Down that side where it's scraped, it needs a repaint. Once the water soaks in to the acrylic paint, it will start to come off. Look, see around that? Corner, look, see around there and around there. Where it's worn there, a bit on there. Have a bit down the front here. And I haven't, you can let this dry overnight, but I just want to experiment with it as well. So it's just more of an experiment as well. 
front of the bumper. You see what I mean? You get that. Let's just get this camera up slightly. Hold on. You get that worn effect. Where the edges of, of, of the paint have worn away. Like that. Um, what you can do then, you can dull that down later with a bit of um, pastels. Get some, like a dirty pastel and just wipe it over so it fades of white. It's not so much in your face. Let me do that. I'll do some on the front on the on the bonnet. It's because I'm holding it in the forceps that you're not getting a good picture. But that's what we're doing here. Let's rub a bit off. Like that. Use a bit of tissue to... You can use some tissue to model it. Especially around the area where the wheel bit is. And a bit at the bottom here. The windscreen. You can tone these down slightly, like I said, along there. That was a bit too much on there. This is a brand new toothbrush, so it's a bit harsh. I picked the wart on it. It's been for the farmer's field a few times, you know. Uh, what else have I got? I've got some. I had something else in here. A bit of subtle. You can use a cotton bud if you want. Do a cotton bud this side. A bit of water. Let's do a bit of cotton bud on here. You'll see it come through in a minute. There you go, it's sort of come through now. See the paint coming off? You do it on that edge. There. Yeah, it's coming off now, like, there you go. See that? Look. It's a little bit on the front here. I'm not going to go too mad with it because it wouldn't have all come off. But You can in fact take a whole layer of, thin layer of paint off if you want. Just fade it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is let this dry off. Let's just have a, a bit of a downward one here, shall we? Going down a bit now. Yeah, it's coming through now. So you get you get my drift, don't you? Yeah. And you could, if you wanted to, go right through to the metal underneath, if you really wanted to. Yeah. So I think I don't want to go too mad with it. Do some more on the edges. Chip paint. Don't forget, this has been on a farmer's field for years. We'd be kicking around the farm and it ended up in some barn somewhere. 
So <coughs> this is what happened. So you could say it's a bit of a barn find, really. That's that's the, the look I'm looking for. Let's look at the back. Let's get a bit more water on there. I don't want to take too, like I said, I don't want to take too much off. It's coming through now, just a few, a few patches. We'll, di we'll dirty all this up at the bottom of the chassis there, and I'll get, uh, I'll get this lot in here, Sc scratched up. That would have been really scratched up. I'll dirty the aluminium down a bit in a bit. That'll be the next stage. But you get the general idea. Uh Edge there. Morning scratches here and there. And the door handles. Right. A bit streaking down there. Right. Let's just get it off here a minute. There you go. In this side, obviously, it's where it's been really badly scuffed, so we'll tone that down we'll tone it all down but that's a general idea that's your whatever you want to show through your paint you need to paint that down then put your hairspray over the top let that dry then put your paint and then you can let that dry overnight or you can do it in a few hours whenever it's dry uh, and then just work at it it's going to look like this, it's going to look stark, but then you can, like I say, tone it down. I mean, that roof looks nice, it's got all mould, green mould all over it. This is going to have all green mould and crap on the bonnet. It's going to have all these toned down. It's, I'm going to do the details as well, obviously. Uh, tone it all down. So, yeah, this should look pretty funky when it's finished. I should do the details on the back. 
add some more crap round here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave it there for now. Back in a minute. Okay. What I'm doing here, if you notice, I've toned it down a bit. See, it's got a really dirty looking look to it. Like, it's got a really mucky look. That's the inside of it was. Now look at the outside. Just toned down a bit. And what I'm done here, is I've got my pastels. And what I do, is while it's matte paint, not gloss, when it's matte paint, just get a little knife and shave a bit off. Yeah. And you can apply it with your finger if you want. Yeah. And then just rub it around, rub it in. The fine particles will stick to the matte surface and give it that mucky look. I mean, you're going to get a lot of dust as well, but you can get it like that and you can get a light brush and just rub it off like that, see? It tones down everything. It gives it that lot mucky look. See what I mean? See what I'm getting at? Yeah. I mean, it's not perfect, but it just looks a lot better than original paint. When you've seen somebody's when they drag them out of these um, barns and that, they're bloody filthy, aren't they? And you can you can mix up the colours. I mean, you've got all these colours to choose from. You can mix them all up and do whatever. And then uh, make it look as dirty or as clean as you want. But I'll do it on the matte surface. You know, it's, it's just it's clinging a bit. It's a bit like a wash, I suppose, but a dry one. Yeah. What we're going to do is going to we can add some. Um, I'm going to fill, get some more muck and crap in the back there. What you can do then, if you want to, you, you can uh, once you've gloss coated it, you can use oil and get some stains coming down if you want to. Or use some of these enamel washes and do some stains. But um, I don't want to go too overboard. It's not been outside. It's been inside. But it's just been a well-worn one. You know. So there you go. It's just an exercise. and seeing. If it, I mean, I've done it on plastic kits. But I've never done it on die cast. So um, it's just an experiment as well. So I'm going to let this all settle a bit. And I'll start doing the inside. Okay, right then, <coughs> we've finished the body, got dirt in there, bit of mark, bit of green mould around the top there, around there, got some staining around the doors, bit of streaking paint, dull headlights, chrome, put it on and dulled it off. Same with the indicators. Fuel stains down the side. Pretty beat up this. So I've got to put some number plates on and fade them in a minute. But essentially, that's done. I can't bother about underneath. Uh, I've painted the, the base black and I've stained it with a brown wash. Uh, the windscreen, I've sanded it over to give it that dirty look so that's done painted the interior black much doing it now what I'm doing with it with wheels and tires you see what I've done with them painted the hubs I then used the pastels while the paint was a bit tacky in the hubs sprinkle some on there and what I'm doing now if you get the pastels you got cut and bud pick a okay this is like a dusty grey and then you can, where I've done those two, where's what I haven't done, yeah, that's a tyre that I haven't done, and you just get hold of it, and rub it around the tyre, like that, put it in, rub it round, all in there, and I've gone round with the sand, uh, the 
the sanded stick and just flatten the the tire as well, so it makes it more um, how can I say more more like a tire. Yeah, just go around with a powder. Some of it, the powder, some of the powder will come off, but if you're rubbing it hard enough, it'll um, it will grind itself into the rubber plastic. So no worries about that. There you go. That just gives it that more of a sort of dusty, dirty look. It hasn't been on the road for a while. Yeah. Okay. So that's where we are at the minute. So I think, really, we're nearly at the assembly stage. Just got to put these number plates on. I got these, actually. I got these off eBay. Look at this lot here. Look. So I thought, they were quite handy. They're stickers, not not decals. So I'll be using a couple of them. So that's where we are. I'll do a bit more and I'll catch you up. This is what we started with. Corgi's Land Rover. Long wheelbase. Play worn. Okay, dokie okay then, finished, all done, put back together, I've tucked the spare wheel in the back, because uh, that's broken, well it's not broken, I've made it broken, I've made it broken, I've made it broken, as if the uh, being took off and not bothered to put back on, yeah, so it's all done, wheels are back on. So I'm not going to put it on the magic roundabout yet. So there's one more clip to do. Oh, I've got number plates on. See that? There. There's one more segment of the video to go. And on the front there. So that's it. That is it. So next time you'll see it, it will be on on some sort of magic roundabout but it'll be there so there you go here you go then an outside shop not the best today but here we go closing up on its new trailer there you go cast it round that's my converted dinky Range Rover I did earlier on so we got that. We can move around. So like this turntable's not the best. There you go. Looking cool. Another shot of the Range Rover. There we go. There we go. So that's what we got. That's what we got, fellas. Excuse the shaky camera, man. Let's hold the man. There we go. I think it turned out pretty good, this one. Pretty good. There's the old back end of it. No number plate being taken away, ready to be restored. There she goes. Very nice. So that's my attempt and my first. So it's not hooked on. I haven't got a. I haven't got a. Um, I don't want to put a tow hook on the Range Rover. <coughs> so I've just bite it up. So it keeps it keeps wandering away from it. Get back on there. There you go. 
Here's my first my first uh, build for the beef eaters monthly challenge. There you go. Hope everybody likes this one. Okay, doke.